we have? How many cows must we own? How much grazing land must we have to give our people a glass of milk with every meal? How many sheep must we have and how much grazing land must we have to give our people a lamb job? I didn't say pork job. This. Defending black women and black children and black babies and black men. The truth must be recognized by the black man. But the word economics comes from the Greek economikos. But it has come to be defined as the science of production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services or the material welfare of humanity. Now a blueprint is something defined that acts as a plan, a model, or something providing guidance. An economic blueprint is exactly what we need. by the black man. We are an international people. Our brothers and sisters are all over the world desirous of doing business with us. But if we are not producing anything, we can't enter into trade and commerce with the nations of the earth. As the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote in message to a black man, quote, as a people, we must become producers and not remain consumers and employees. We must be able to extract raw materials from the earth and manufacture them into something useful for ourselves. This would create jobs in production. We must remember that without land there is no production and the surplus of what we produce we would sell. This would help develop a field of commerce and trade as other free and independent people whose population is less than that of our so-called Negroes. 
the truth must be recognized by the black man. We're talking about revolution because that's the era that you're caught in. You're caught in a revolutionary era. Defending black women and black children and black babies and black men. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad outlined some basic principles. Number one, recognize the necessity for unity and group operation. Do you understand that if we can work together as a group in unity, we will be more successful, more powerful, more able to do the things that as individuals working by ourselves, we have never been able to do. Pool your resources physically as well as financially. Stop wanton criticism of everything that is black owned and operated. Keep in mind that jealousy destroys from within. Observe the operations of the white man. He is successful. He makes no excuses for his failures. He works hard in a collective manner. You do the same. Now these are things that we must do. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad asked us to commit to save five cents a day. He said if we can save just five cents a day from our wages, 25 cents a week for 52 weeks in the year, that would mean we would put aside $13 a year that we could save in a national savings treasury. At that time that he wrote this, we numbered 22 million people and approximately 5 million were wage earners. Well, if 5 million wage earners save $13 a year, this would mean 65 million saved out of our wages in one year at the rate of 25 cents per week. It would be painless. Today, brothers and sisters, don't you think we can do better? than what we were asked to do 48 years ago. According to government statistics, there are a little over 16 million blacks employed at some level. Look what happens if we raise the economic bar and contribute the same nickel a day. The truth must be recognized by the black man. Defending black women and black children and black babies. Must be recognized by the black man. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he wanted me to speak for all black people. Greetings, beloved listeners. I begin in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful. I bear witness that there is but one God. Welcome to the Black Agenda here on the Street 919 FM. I am Brother David Muhammad. And I'm going to be in studio with you up to 9 o'clock this morning, inshallah. And in a short while from now, I will open up the telephone lines and take your calls on 342-0081 and 
466 5391 You can send WhatsApp messages directly to me on 3320214 And of course you can go to the social media pages of the Street 919 FM and follow the program live so, beloved family, what a week we had. Of course, Wednesday was our Eid celebration. And once again, similar to last day in many ways, but different to last day in many ways as well. So we had arguably the most beautiful day of the year. Of course, just a few days before that, we had the late night prayer from the evening, iftar, dining, discussions, readings, up to the midnight prayer over midnight um, for the 27th night of Ramadan. And then, of course, got the bond with hundreds of our people at the Kwame Ture Center on Wednesday. It is arguably the best day of the year for us it was so beautiful with our people coming from both near and far to share our very special day with us and let me just <clears throat> say two things so thank you thank you thank you all of those not just those who attended but the brothers and the sisters who helped make it a tremendous success once again. Uh, the children, all of the children, and that's a real joy for us. Um, a real highlight of our Eid celebration was... <laughs> uh, so, so, so. We have those uh, responsible for, you know, games, entertainment with the children and so on. So there was a bouncy castle outside. They played musical chairs. They had the uh, hoops to win prizes. Different things, different things. But among the activities, and this was a key talking point, among the activities for the children, there was a piñata. And, I mean, you know what a piñata is. You make this pepe mache object and it's filled with sweets and chocolates and snacks and the children beat it with a stick and then it bursts open and so on. Okay. So we actually had one of those. But on the front of it, you know, we have this tradition in Trinidad, the Good Friday bubblies and so on which which I am still trying to find out the true history of that because just going off on a short tangent for a bit um, psychologist uh, Albert Bandura did an experiment on how children pick up behaviors from adults so they did this experiment where they had like a life-size doll and they had children observe an adult beating up this doll, beating up the doll. And then the adult leaves the room and they, they're observing the child who's alone in the room with the doll. And the child begins to replicate the behaviors that he saw the adult doing. So the child starts beating up the doll as well. And it's called the Bobo Doll Experiment. Okay, you can look it up. Albert Bandura, the Bobo Doll Experiment. And so anytime children see adults carrying on with certain kinds of behaviors, and then the children are in the same situation, in the absence of the adults, the children tend to replicate or copy the behaviors that they saw the adults doing. And the Bobo doll experiment has been done 
hundreds of times over and over by several psychologists and social scientists and the results always the same so in trinidad of course we use the term boboli as in the good friday boboli that we beat up as well but this experiment in psychology is called the bobo doll and it's beaten up in the same way that we will beat a good friday bubbly so i'm trying i mean there has to be some kind of link between the two but another issue for another time anyway on our pinata was the face of israeli prime minister benjamin netanyahu and we did a short explanation at the beginning of the that particular children's activity and we explained what's happening in israel with palestine the gaza that this man is overseeing the bombing every day the killing of hundreds of innocent men women and children but in particular the innocent children and of the tens of thousands of children that he killed think think outside of the tens of thousands of children that he killed this is from october to now there are thousands of other children who have survived but who have lost limbs lost arms lost legs and even those who weren't bombed and killed and even those who were not maimed or crippled or lost limbs hundreds more have died from pure straight up starvation no food no water and so of course we explain this and um and then we proceeded with the event now let me tell us tomorrow i conclude part 3 of a three part session that we've had for the sunday morning lectures at the kwame turi center tomorrow morning april 14 we deal with the topic of signs of the end times and the new world order and we're linking it right back it's going to be such a complete discourse not just israel and palestine and gaza and the international bankers and the zionists and their control of governments like america and england but also the secret societies the so-called illuminati the decoding of the number 666 the global influence of those learned protocols of the elders of zion it's going to so many different places So I'm especially inviting all of you out tomorrow for that particular presentation. Signs of the end times and the new world order. Not to be missed, beloved. Truly not to be missed. So that's tomorrow morning 11 o'clock at the Kwame Ture Center. We're keeping up momentum. We're keeping up that momentum because over the last uh, few weeks or so, we've had so much activities taking place. Last week Saturday, we had the last session of cycle 6 of the Boys Academy and we'll be starting back in June. but you're looking at close to 60 sessions thus far approximately 60 youth development sessions thus far and i also want to ask you to save the date save the date 
Saturday, May 25th. Yes, African Liberation Day 2024. Save that date, beloved. From 3 p.m. at the Kwame Ture Center, our African Unity Conference. This will be the 11th year that we're doing it, but it will be the sixth anniversary of the opening of our building, the Kwame Ture Center. May 25th, worldwide, is African Liberation Day. This year will be the 65th anniversary of African Liberation Day, which started in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, May 25th, 1963, under His Imperial Majesty, Emperor of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie, and it has been celebrated by African communities all over the world ever since 1963. And we specifically chose that date in 2018 to open our center. And every year from 2013, really, we have been having what we now refer to as the preeminent event of black consciousness in Trinidad and Tobago and the Eastern Caribbean on the annual calendar. Of course, our guests come in from across the region. We usually have guests in from the United States of America, England, Jamaica, Guyana, St. Vincent, Barbados, Antigua, and wherever else. So, we have voices from the youth, from the trade union movement, some of our politically minded, conscious brothers and sisters, our Rastafarian community, our Muslim community, some of those who are involved in business, in law, it is the coming together and the meeting of the minds of our people. And it's one of our most special occasions, period. So please put the date down from now. It is five Saturdays from now. African Unity Conference 2024. Saturday, May 25th, from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the Kwame Ture Center. All right, so family, I want to give us the opportunity to get in on the phones. All right, 342-0081 and 466-53. Nine one, and um, I pledge to be more mindful of the tech, the private text messages. Because I have to apologize for last week because of the opening segment that was part of the program where the mic was off. So I, I have it right here with me, and I'm observing my private text messages. But just before I open up the phone line, I just wanted to give us one thought to marinate in our minds as we open up our discussion. One simple thought. Beloved, imagine hypothetically Put yourself in this situation. Think of if we had all died and gone to hell. And in hell, there were TV stations, radio stations, and newspapers, and there were news reports informing the public of what was happening in hell. If we had all died and gone to hell and there was a media, what kinds of stories do you think you will be hearing on the news? Maybe we will hear stories such as 
a four-year-old girl's head being severed from her body and the body being placed in one room and the head being placed in another room maybe we would hear about seven babies dying from medical negligence in the hospitals maybe we will hear about mass killings mass shootings drive-bys and a people locked in communities with high unemployment, low minimum wage, oppression and brutality. Maybe if we had all died and gone to hell and in hell there was a prison system, maybe it will be filled up to capacity with those who are being denied human rights and civil rights, being made to live like animals with the risk of developing the mentality of a beast to be let back out into the general public and interact within civilization with a grudge against the state. Maybe if we had all died and gone to hell and there was a police force there, that the police force would be killing innocent civilians arbitrarily and then lying about it, claiming that they were attacked first. If we had all died and gone to hell and in hell there were schools, what do you think would be happening in the schools? We would probably be seeing videos of one whole group of students fighting so aggressively with another whole group of students and filming it. And the anger, the rage, the venom. The self-destruction, the imploding. There will be drugs and guns circulating in the community brought in by the wealthy, rich, elite, bourgeoisie 1% who are supported by the political puppets who are defended by the political muppets who open their mouths to defend a system of corruption, injustice, tyranny, oppression, and exploitation. If we had died and gone to hell, this is what hell would probably be like. But we don't live in hell, we live in Trinidad. And if living in Trinidad right now or other parts of the Caribbean, we're seeing a life that is like hell. And devils in control of the economy, devils in control of leadership and authority, devils bringing in all of these weapons and tools of mass destruction. And the only defense that some of us have for it is, well, the black youth don't have to take the drugs, the black youth don't have to pick up the guns, and you totally forgive and excuse those non-Africans who are responsible for littering our communities with guns and drugs. You totally forgive them and point a finger at your own people. This is like living in hell. Well, the question is now, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to organize and network ourselves to be able to resist those forces and insulate our communities in such a way that we can become independent and self-sufficient, non-reliant on corrupt and evil forces, and we begin slowly to rebuild from the ground up, meaning teaching, educating, inspiring, and motivating our youth. The focus must be on our youth. So let me open up the telephone lines now. 342-0081 and 4665391. Caller. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. You know, it always amazes me. When we have seen history show that in this country, some of the most gruesome crime and the most infamous criminals 
or of the East Indian descent. We look at Dolce, the Joy Ramaya, down to the um, Polo Brothers, and the, 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 we, we know them all. Boise Singh. Yes, right, and the Ballet Brothers, and all these things. And, and, and we even know that the, the most wanted man in Trinidad the big at one time, Sandoli, was of East Indian descent. But you know what we don't see? We don't see the East Indian community identify themselves with their criminal elements. But not only that, you don't see others identifying them with their criminal elements. No, because you know why? They because they control way. their narratives. We don't. Exactly. They find a way to break away from their history to make it not their destination. And we continue, unfortunately, to make our history our destination and until we learn to stop doing that then we will be, be able to go forward you see one of the things we forget and one of the things we don't understand because we don't know our history is that many many years ago in the, the, the heart of slavery when we had that black mothers would kill the black children because they didn't want them to born into slavery but will keep the half white ones because they know massa will treat those children better because they were partly their own and now we see the same thing exploding right now where the most dangerous place for a black man to be is in the belly of a black woman with the amount of genocide, I have to put it, of the black unborn baby. We see that, and the, the, the thing is they are paid to do that. They get benefits for doing those things, and it's all over the world. Well, we assist. We see that that, that is, uh, is now a commonality. We see that the, the, the Mandingos were made to kill each other. And right now we are seeing that the black people, I don't know who is using it as sport, but they are being paid to kill each other. Because of course they are being paid because we saw what happened with the, the, the young woman already. The, the, the African guy just came out and shot her. People are being paid to commit crimes and we're not understanding that because the black youth who are unemployed and don't have the finance to import drugs and guns are not the ones that are orchestrating the criminal activity in our country. But we refuse to go and tackle those things and we refuse to put forward the ones, the black people that have been successful like yourself and I know people are gonna hate me for this, but even the present prime minister was able to come out of his circumstances, but we don't promote these people. They don't promote people like you. They promote the criminal elements of the country and say they are black. And this is why we continue that because we are emulating what people are telling us. And we are, are we, like this, black people of the world are stuck in a Stockholm syndrome where we love our captors and abusers, but hear ourselves. Until these things don't change, well, my brother, all I could say to you at this point is I hope that I hear from you a lot more. As a matter of fact, I hope that we hardly have a Black Agenda program where we don't hear your voice. And I wish we can get in contact. I want to thank you so much for your contribution. Caller, good morning. Hey, good morning. But I'm on good morning. Good I like how you talk this morning. Very interesting. And it's not. I want people to listen to this. You see all these brutal things happening? They want to the media just portray it like if we are the most brutal, savages people in this country. And it never started like that. Because let me tell you this. In Africa, for years, the American media used to portray Africa.
Africa with cannibalism. For years they're doing this. But let me tell people this. And the Caribbean. Oh. Hello? And the Caribbean. And the Caribbean. But let me tell people this. And people listen very good and pay attention. How oh, we could be cannibal how oh, we could do about cannibalism and God give him mango to eat. You understand? Food under the ground. We, the islands, was a fruitful place where the white people came and tried to conquer us. Cannibalism started in Europe when winter started. That is why they always like to hide their history like if their history was perfect. And I want people to remember that this thing, this, this monster that they like to um, act, Dracula, was really a real man. You, you speak in some serious wisdom right now, you know. Go ahead. Yes. His name was, I think, Valde Impela. And when you see it, he was indulged with cannibalism too because he said he'd eat victims and them. But the white and drink their blood, say, right? Yes, and the, but the white media say, eat the you say eat his people. So with that now, they always feel that black people was cannibal. But cannibalism started in Europe. Because Europe was cold, climate and then I went place get cold, people get hungry. How we could be cannibalism and we have mango to suck. We have food to eat. We have fishes to catch in these oceans. And we have food under the earth. We have to try and educate young people and them. And the next thing too, we have to teach our young girls and them love the hair because up to this day still have young ladies and them burning the hair and putting these flaws here to make themselves look white and before I go most of these flaws here came come from India and China have a good morning wow I don't know what to say, but this has to be one of the best starts to a Black Agenda program. Two of the best back-to-back callers that I can remember in all of my years to start off a program. Uh, My brothers, I thank you so much. We've set a really high standard this morning. Thank you so much. Call it good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Can I still in Hakim Mohammed? Walaikum salam. How are you? Alhamdulillah. I'm great. I'm yeah. great. Thank you. Well, David, you know, your program reminds me of something. Eh? African people long ago on a Sunday, the food they would cook, an African dish. When you hear they do so, and they want to, they, they want to eat a fall, because we never eat fall whole week, meat whole week. We eat good food, everything else. But they will take that food and they put that food in a cup and they'll they, they push it out and think before they get on the Sunday. So when they eat, they eat something good, something solid. Missing your program, not, not be able to make a contribution to your program, is like missing a Sunday, African Sunday meal. Oh. It's like eating, it's like eating um, street food. <laughs> when when they get into your program, you know. <laughs> but the brother just always tell him something. They were just this week I was watching a woman with a, a white woman with a, a, with a map on Algeria and she was speaking about um, about the world and, and, and human being. And she put the map and she said, life begin here in Africa. And everybody and they move across and they went up to you through so the Africans. And here you get, you understand? All these different sets of races they're talking about. Everything came out of Africa. And we have to understand something also. That the fruits, you see uh, fruits and vegetables, that is all our body needs. When you're going into the, veg- into the, f- the vegetables, the fruits, you see everything that is selling the drugstore in the fruits. And if you eat it, you understand, you have no need for the drugstore. Because check the human body and check the fruits. Every fruit have a season. It has all the things, vitamins and everything, phosphorus, ABC, um, 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 all the vitamins, everything, fiber, everything in the fruit. And the fruits come in a season. So when it's, the season is around, you eat as much as you can eat. 
until that food leave out, it will come back again and your body will absorb what it needs, you understand, to carry on. And you will not go to his yoke soon, you know. His yoke soon will close, you know, you have to understand that. But I want to go into something here in, in um, Palestine. And you know, I saw a lot of Arabs, you understand, in the celebration where we just go on the, the Eid. I don't know when they land in Trinidad. But what I'm looking at, all that has been happening, all the um, genocide that has been created, that has been taking place in, in Palestine, I hear them saying nothing. Or it's only you, you understand, that is, have been speaking about this for the longest while. Nobody, all of a sudden that day, everybody could talk about, you understand, Palestine and what is going on there. The genocide is taking place all over the world. You understand, millions of people protesting against what's going on here. Down here, they say nothing, you understand, but they wait until the celebration to come out, just up like Arabs, and talk about, you understand, Palestine for that day. Right now, in Germany yesterday, the ban of um, a, a, a doctor from who went in Palestine from coming back to, to Germany because they had a, a, a protest against the, um, the war there. They ban him, put him on appearance to him again. What do you say? If you send a video with his voice about what he was to say, you know, sir, they will lock him up. They will lock him up. This, uh, this will be an intro that what we see. We ain't seen nothing. We ain't hearing nothing. Just in, in Grenada last week, they um, we can say a fire a priest. You know. I never heard about it. A priest by not a Paul because he stand, you understand, against what taking place with in Palestine, you understand? The kind of injustice, the kind of you kind of wickedness that is taking place when you watch the atrocities that genocide is taking place. We hear him say nothing. So are you now you are you ever when I listen to them as well, I remember um Jimmy Cliff how tune he sing, you understand? Hypocrites. Deceitful hypocrites, you understand? But you will know the truth. You understand? When you're going into the sea, you're speaking about the hypocrites. One day, you understand? You could talk about Palestine, but all, all these little I see a little child in Palestine, the little girl, she lose her leg. She says she want to be a doctor. And you know what happened? They bomb the place and they give the eye. But they really just hurt me as a black man, as a human being, when I see what, what taking place there. And they come, you know what they want to do now? Do is, is Iran, they want to get at you now. They want to destroy um, Iran. Oh, gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's the whole objective. Yeah, I walk around, they say they're they, they fighting ways, and they, they lick up, you understand? The embassy killing Iran, people. Iran, yeah, they, they bombed the huh? um, Iranian embassy in Damascus. Yes, and the rest of the world is saying nothing about that, you understand? No, it is very, it's, 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 this thing is too much. But if I want to say to my people, what I observe here, my people are not taking up on the air. It's only your program, like your program like a Sunday meal, after come Sunday meal we used years ago. It's only your program you can see something. The other station is yet, yet. Black people is in trouble. All people is in trouble. And you know, you know what's happening most? When I am talking about African. Conveniently, they, they use the word African. But they don't mean African. You understand? They mean politics. The, the, the race is bigger than the politicians. The race is before the politicians, the people before the politicians. We are in a we are in a mess in this place. But anyway, it's so beautiful and so nice to be able to make a contribution when the morning come on your program, but no other program that's get reparation, nobody is talking about that. Anything that everything that is good for the Africa, nobody all the sport athletes that have brought and continue to bring recognition to this country, no other race have done it. You understand? Know, they don't talk about that, you know. They don't speak about that. It's we, from the beginning of the time in this country, we have brought this country to where it is today. I was, I was to tell you the idea. I say, you what I mean? When they brought our ancestors and they dropped them on the shore, you understand? It's, it's forest meat, it's jungle meat. We are the ones that cut down all the trees. Thousands die in the, in the jungle, preparing the place here for all those who come and benefit in and tell you to the black man lazy. How do black men become lazy? Up to today, you said something they did, but they about uh, cultural um, theft, musical theft. Who music they use in the bars, in the stores, and everywhere to attract people? Not the African music, no other music, you understand? So that psychologically, it's, 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 it's tough, and we don't even understand what is going on. But I leave it. Yeah. All right. well, thank you. Thank you so much. Really started off on a powerful leg this morning. So we're gonna pause for our eight o'clock break and then we're gonna come back. I'm gonna take more phone calls as soon as we come back. Stay with us. Thank you. Views expressed are not necessarily the views of the management of the street 919 FM.
FM. You, you, you got bills to pay, and so do we. Let's go pay some bills on the street 919 FM. 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 Tune in to the street 919 FM every second, third, and fourth Thursday at 8 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. Welcoming you to Reset with Dr. Levet, your weekly guide to holistic health and wellness. As we dive deep into the worlds of holistic health, from ancient herbal remedies to cutting-edge holistic practices, we'll explore it all. Join Dr. Levet with over 11 years of experience as a holistic health practitioner, healer, and master herbalist as he shares invaluable insights to help you reset your mind body and spirit reset with dr levitt every second third and fourth thursday at 8 a.m to 8 30 a.m only on the street 919 fm Jazz and Wine, or is it Beyond Jazz and Wine? Sunday, May 5th, 4 p.m. Set the stage, the queen amongst the kings, powerhouse vocalist, Mauricia Kagan, saxophone specialist, Malcolm Boyce, versatile and captivating, Sigu Rankin, panist extraordinaire, Dane Galston, with his band, Live Sweet Bread, and the chosen one, Ja Melody, will get you off your seats. This event is definitely Beyond Jazz and Wine. Experience this musical journey at the enchanting outdoor garden theater at Queens Hall. Transform into an oasis fit for kings and queens. Sunday, May 5th, 4 p.m. Limited early bird tickets available at Java Nation, Queens Park East, and online at islandetickets.com or call 737-2373. Jazz and Wine. Experience the sweetness over and over again. This is a big mic, not the mass man, the help man. And joining me will be Little Mike as we discuss tips on taking you from zero health to optimum health using different protocols and techniques. Trinidad and Tobago, join us every Wednesday from 10.05 a.m. to 10.35 a.m. on the street 91.9 FM. For Can Talk with Big Mike is not where it is, it's here it is. Boom! Turn your lights down low And listen to the master's radio Get in touch with God Turn your radio on You are invited to join Pastor Morris Johnson of the Church of the Firstborn Assembly Miracle Center, located at number 399 Eastern Main Road, Waiko, in Sangre Grande, for the Old Time Gospel Hour Family Radio Ministry, every Sunday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. On Mondays, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., Trauma and Bereavement, also every Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., The Low and You. Wednesdays from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., Dealing with Disabilities, and every Friday evening from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m., the all-night prayer live on the street, 919 FM, designed with you in mind. This program deals with the day's issues from a biblical perspective, and you'll also be given the opportunity to call in and interact with us. Micah 6, 8 says, He had showed you, O man, what is good and what doth the Lord require of you, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Your financial support to the First Citizens Bank will be greatly appreciated. Account number 795-222. For further information, call 753-1113 or 610-4673. Blessings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are invited to listen to the final hour broadcast heard every Monday from 12 midnight to 5 a.m. in the morning on the street 919 FM radio. Hear my mom, Pastor Helen Garcia, and myself, Pastor Valentine Garcia Jr., preach the word of God to the elderly, youth, and children. We can be contacted at 629-0113 or 623-8444. The church is located at 26 Prince Street in Port of Spain. We look forward to you joining us. God bless you. As my life, I lay it on the altar. As my life, you've 
been waiting for this redemption. The way forward. The elevation of consciousness. Solid as a rock. June 1st, 2024. Concert Capital. Queen Sparks of Venom, Trinidad. Redemption. We present Sisla Kalonji. Dry Sisla. Global Reggae Powerhouse. Steel Pulse. Christopher Martin. Holly Buds. And the Don Dada himself, Super Cat. On June 1st, light overthrows darkness. Redemption. Get your limited 350 general, 850 VIP, and 1250 VVIP tickets now. Follow Redemption, the concert on Facebook and Instagram for all info. Redemption. second hour of the black agenda here on the street 919 fm we're going up to nine o'clock on this saturday morning april 13th remember tomorrow morning at the kwame Touré center we have an extraordinarily thought provoking lecture for you entitled the signs of the end of times and the new world order. It is going to touch so many areas, beloved. We start at 11 o'clock at the Kwame Touré Center. Look forward to welcoming you. And then I also want you to set the date, save the date for African Unity Conference 2024, which shall be held, inshallah, on May 25th, Saturday, May 25th, from 3 p.m. at the Kwame Touré Center. This would be the sixth, the sixth anniversary of the opening of the center. Last year was probably the closest thing to the actual opening itself. Last year, the fifth anniversary. We want to do our best to top that as well. And, of course, we ask you from this daily to set aside whatever plan. And, you know, ensure that we can be there on that very special day with us saturday may 25th all right beloved so i'm opening right back up the lines right away our numbers in studio here on the street 919 fm for the black agenda are 342-0081 and 466 
5391. Let's go straight back to the lines. Caller, good morning. Uh, good morning, Brother Mom. Uh, Brother Mom, I call you to ask your favor. Now, beforehand, I used to do prophesying in your program um, some years back. And that time, uh, Mr. Um, Obama was president, and, and the present president is um, the, well, the vice president. I want you to check into your records because I made some predictions that time, right? And um, I'm doing some of this now on my Facebook account, and I'm going to do um, some this morning. And I, um, I'll type it in later on in a while there into my Facebook account. Because of the fact that when on that um, time, Ban Ki-moon was the um, United Nations Secretary General, and all of them, and Europe and everybody, Britain and everybody, agreed that they wasn't going to go to war, um, do war, and it has broken their word. Now we are seeing, I, I, I did prophesy, and I put it on my um, Facebook account, with the Maryland Bridge and everything, and then they come and see they didn't take this note the first time, and I did my second. That was on the third. I, um, um, uh, so I published that one and didn't take it on. When the Maryland Bridge come and happens, then you now I placed on the 31st of March a second one, but they're taking it into consideration. And I see you are Tell me something. What, what is your, uh, what, what's the name of your Facebook page? Uh, it's, but right now, Facebook has made me um, using my name, so just Curtis Simon at 6458. That's the number, um, yeah. Curtis Simon. Simon. 6458. So, um, the prophecies were done on the 3rd of March and on the 31st of March. And I'm going to do the next one because basically what is going to happen. But what I think the Caribbean and Trinidad government should start doing is um, earthquake drills. Because basically, if you look at what is happening and Taiwan and the after effects with the earthquake, and everybody's registered, it never happened before. You see the same thing in America and Jane. And I put there that this is going to have rain and tornadoes and this and that. And you see what's happening. And the rain is happening having uh, tornado and things inside there with tears and things. The ne- what is going to be happening now is this, in this distance and now what I saw is volcanoes. And that's the only most dangerous one. So I hope the, um, the government that is listening, or both the Caribbean and Trinidad government, start doing earthquake drills. Because basically these earthquakes are given after shock and after shock and have it and, and devastating con- consequences. So that's why I ask you if you can go back into your records and check at that point in time and see those things here because it is basically that coming up. And Mr. Biden and them say, uh, claiming again that they are still going to support Israel. I also put it here that there's an earthquake coming down there and that will deal with earth as well um, nuclear facilities. And basically, but they have to extinct them, and they are also going to be attacking the, the people are reaching to this boiling point. They are going to start attacking the Jews around the world at the same point in time, which America and the rest of the world would have no control over. So, if they get, um, this seems to be, you know, they start taking it just because, because they get copies of it because sometimes followed around the world and became an international public figure. So, um, all around the world, they follow you. CBS, NBC, all of them, so all of them will be taking notes. And the and it is published. So basically, I ask if you can do that. So we, uh, please, and bring up and the rest. I just to pick up the record. So then, basically, when I just come, we'll be able to compare and it's basically what I said then and what is happening at the present now. And that is a couple of years back and what is happening now, brother Mohammed. So I love to and listening, brother Mohammed. Enjoy the rest of your day, brother Mohammed. Thank you so much. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. I have to say. But thank, thank you for that. Uh, call it good morning. Hey, good morning, Wait a minute. I think I um, the, your your initial. Um, Sorry, I think I think it's a bit difficult for me to interact with a full conversation with you. You probably noticed, right? So I have to listen while you're speaking and then speak after. But call it good morning. Are you there? Yeah, morning, brother. Uh, listen, yeah, 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 morning. Okay, so you seem to have lost that one. Yeah, mo- morning, brother. Morning. I'm seeing someone on the line. Oh. Morning. Yes, good morning. Go ahead. Yeah, how you doing, brother? Um, you know, okay. yeah, yeah, the scripture of, of hell is apt and it's current because it's the description of the world order since, the, since 1945. When victory was claimed by the Allies, right? But you know, going forward, eh? and something that 
Um, you know, the Jewish Pan African movement started in the late 19th century by people like George Padmore, and they're coming forward and so on. But through CLR James, Sophie Carmichael, the message, and all that. And it was, it was started by Caribbean brothers, then spread to the continent, and then it, it, it flourished, right? But then between that, what we have had over the intervening years was um, people who preferred democracy, and then there were others who went to the Marxist learners, we are thinking, right? And you mean you could say the Trotsky High School, I think, uh, on, on how you would actualize the benefits of the, of the underclass, right? And have it um, be a little bit more egalitarian, so all could benefit. And that has been the struggle from then to now. But you know, um, the thing that, that for me in the modern dynamic that people are not paying attention to, do you know how the paradigm could shift crucially, Brother David? This, and this, this is my view, is that there must be some, some cooperation. Uh, and cooperation. And what I mean by that is that places south of the equator must come together to maybe shift. Because when I think about it, it's because it's south of the equator that has the resources, right? And what about the world population? So, all right, so you take China, India, and Africa in totality. That would be about a half of the world's population. And we basically to come together in a meaningful way and say, listen, the nonsense has to stop. The world order imposed on the world has to stop. I think we could see a change. And unless and until that happens, the hell, as you described, will continue. But I just want to say that the election, the US election of upcoming of November, that will be the final lane in the court. Because I'm predicting that Trump is going to win. Because Biden has lost all his, his traction because of what is going on in Gaza and what is to come with, with the Iran. Say loudly, enough is enough. You know? And I'm saying that once a Trump, a second Trump presidency, is the precursor to the biggest conflagration that we will ever see. And sadly, it will be televised. But I'm um, good discussion, brother, and as always, good to hear you and your thoughts on all developing world scene. Thanks for your opportunity, and take care. Thank you, my beloved brother, for your wisdom, for your brilliance. And what is most peculiar about the upcoming U.S. election is the last time when Donald Trump won, people were wondering what he would have been like. And many were speculating, saying, I think he's going to be a disaster. I think he's going to be racist. There was the whole building the wall thing. Um, many did not foresee the Muslim ban coming. Uh, probably one of the most antagonistic political decisions in the last 50 years or so would have been the removal of the Israeli embassy or the American embassy in Israel um, to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv and all of these really contentious kind of terrorism inducing acts and decisions um, that he made. So the first time around 2016 when he came in there was curiosity about what a regime under him would be like. But now, the whole world already knows where he's coming from, what his thinking is, and that's what they're choosing. You see, that's the difference. Before, it was speculation. Now, the world knows. America knows what this man is about and they're choosing that now let me say this 
because while you and I could sit down here and lament over how quote unquote terrible Donald Trump is, my personal opinion on the matter is it makes very little difference in some aspects of it. I remember very clearly because Hillary Clinton did get more votes than Donald Trump. In fact, she got a lot more votes. She got three million more votes. But, of course, the way the, the distribution of the delegates and so on, she didn't win. But I remember thinking, what evidence do you have to show me that things would have been better under Hillary Clinton? Hillary Clinton was behind the assassination of one of the best world leaders in modern times, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi. I mean, it's like, and I've always said it, I've been saying it since the early 1990s. It's a competition between Satan, the devil, Beelzebub, Lucifer, and Iblis. Which one would you vote for? <laughs> Regardless of which one you vote for, the results will be hell. And Biden is there. Look, Biden has stood there and watched hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of children being killed maimed, limbs blown off, starved to death, almost on a daily basis, on a daily basis. And Biden, just like Rishi Sunak in England, they, their position is Israel has the right to defend itself. 1,400 Israelis killed. We're moving towards 40,000 Palestinians killed, innocent women and children who had nothing to do with the Hamas attack. But Biden, now the thing is, if Donald Trump was the president, he would have probably said the same thing. Israel has the right to defend itself. And people would have been saying, oh, if Biden was in power, he would have never said that. Well, Biden is in power, and he did say that. And again, Israel recently launched an attack against the Iranian embassy in Damascus, in Syria. The news just said killed several officials. Several. That probably is something like 60, 70. It was kind of odd that the news didn't give a specific number. Okay, so Israel just killed 60 or 70, let's say. Iranian officials, government officials. Now Iran wants to strike back. And same Joe Biden is saying we are standing with Israel. Israel just killed a whole lot of people in another country in addition to the country that they're currently killing tens of thousands of people in. They just killed numerous government officials from Iran. Iran is talking about retaliating for it. And I'm sure Iran doesn't intend to kill 40,000 Israelis. But America, yesterday, Biden said they're standing with Israel. And so, Which means, basically, Israel can, can kill anyone, do anything. But it was only when three, one, two, three, British uh, aid workers were killed in bomb strikes that America said and England oh there should be a ceasefire three of them died 40,000 Palestinians dead Israel has a right to defend itself three British died in the crossfire in the midst of it oh it's time for a ceasefire so now that's Biden that's the quote unquote good one that's the lesser of the evils so, so how more evil will the actual evil one be? Well, I don't really want to find out, but it just goes to show what is the difference? Oh, you know what amazes me? <laughs> the way that people get so defensive, even here in Trinidad, 
People get so defensive about these comparisons for the most part for someone like myself. It makes little or no difference who's in power, who's in office. It's true that I would have had certain empty conversations with people who were out of government and then got into government and then after they got into government they limit their public communications with you i have experienced that so the only difference for me would be the kind of promises and overtures and ideas that are shared with someone like me before one's entry into office and i know for a fact that this one percent here does not like their puppets interacting with me brother david muhammad i know that for a fact that the puppet masters don't like their puppets interacting with me and they don't appreciate any ties or connections it's kind of pathetic and it's really weak so to me and I believe to many people in this society it makes little or no difference but you can't get angry with me because the seat or chair or authority or office I almost said power because it's those who control the economy who have the power those whom they manipulate have the office but you can't get upset with me because i'm not a beneficiary of those systems <laughs> i mean my whole life bears testimony to that and to all of those they're gonna answer you know trust me they're gonna answer all of those who pretend to not know about the work that we're doing and then others to try to justify it trying to sweep what we're doing under the rug reaching those youth through that boys academy setting up networks in the community interacting with our people whose society scorns but you continue to pretend that you don't know what we're doing talking to the politicians continue to try to underscore it continue that's you and that's what you do so while you do what you do i have to do what i do okay and what i do has nothing to do with your agenda or what you do all right three four two zero zero eight one and 466-5391. But having said all of that, yes, that November election in America is going to be deep. It's going to be really deep. So let's go back to the phone lines. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. A blessed morning to you, brother David. Blessings to you. Great to hear your voice. Um, lovely comment. Topics on point. Now, the the manuscript of, of the Satan um chronicle of Trinidad and Tobago would be very nice to know, brother David. Last year was six hundred. If you understand what I'm saying, when you writing down all this the scroll, what happened now? Just as what happened to the baby and these people in the hospital, it's so nice. He, he glad for that. If you understand, by it's only people with, with what is being hurt. Now, what is going on in the Middle East now is they are trying to escalate that war to be a regional thing so they can say is Iran, Syria, Lebanon we causing it. But just as we say, America is the military industry of the world 
And that is how they're surviving right now, by producing more military ammunition to kill people. Just as we're saying, there's over 30,000 Palestinians died. But just three British and one Polish, one this and one that, they want to cause call ceasefire and to bring in aid. But Brother David, it's all a sham. They want to starve all the, the people of Palestine and kill as much as possible. Thank you very much. Hmm, thank you, sir. All with the aid, with the support of their friends, their American friends, their English friends. Call it good morning. Very good morning, my brother. Uh, greetings, what? greetings, greetings, beloved. How are you? I am good, Kistans. I am good. But, hey, oh boy, I have to just feel so good this morning with this. <laughs> they started with blazing guns. Oh, the yes. What, what, so what a start. Im- what a start. Well informed, well informed, man. And I just, as you hope, that they would stay with the program and, and, and continue to give all their information and all their knowledge. You came out this morning, guns are blazing. Thank you, brothers. Thank you all so much. Okay. Take care. Bye. Uh, uh, Okay. All right. (laughs) Appreciate that brief greeting so, so, so very much. Thank you. Always great to hear your voice. And it's, it's good to take calls for uh, literally two hours as well. All right, so I have two callers online. One would have to hold. So, uh, caller, good morning. Good morning, Brother David Mohamed. Good morning, sir. Brother David Mohamed, I have been observing something in this country. I noticed that this country becoming an Indian dominancy country. I have nothing against the Indian, no. but I have against the inequality and the injustice in this country. Now, when I look at our judicial system, I always wonder how come in a country with 50% of the kind of 50% Indian, that our judicial system, our courthouses, have almost about 80% Indian judges and magistrates. And sometimes we wonder how come so many African people is in jail as though African people committing all crime in this country. Most of the crimes, especially those as a prestigious crime, have been committed by people of other races besides African people. And they are not in the jailhouse. Now, when I look at it, this, that is a form of racism because, take for example, recently there, there was a doctor, an Indian doctor, Brought before the court for in possession of drugs, all types of drugs, sentinel and so on. He was charged fourteen thousand dollars in the courthouse under a, a Indian judge. This man pleaded guilty in possession of all these drugs. He signed only fourteen thousand dollars, and up to this day. The, 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 the um, medical personality hasn't come out and say a word. This doctor seems to be operating still. What, was that in Sangre Grande by chance? Huh? Was that in Sangre Grande? I don't know exactly where in Trinidad, but it happened in Trinidad. I do remember that. And, and, and let me tell you something. Up to this day, the, the, the um, certain talk show hosts have been calling on the medical fraternity to say something whether this man is still operating or not. Up to this day, not one of them come out and say that. Even the health minister, they call on him, he ain't come out and say a word concerning that matter. And that doctor probably still operating in this country, probably under the influence of drugs. Now, African people have to be aware of what's going on in this country. You know? Because some strange things have been happening in the medical fraternity that seems to be 
there's some kind of I don't know, racist agenda or some kind of thing going on. Right? And that is something we have to look at in this country. African people will not get justice in the court houses because uh, what happened 85% in land magistrates and judges in this country? What? These people are not God or not? They are all kind of prejudice in the mind. They, they are human beings. Right? And this is something has to be fixed in this country, else we'll never get justice in our courthouses. Thank you very much. Mm, thank you very much. And I mean, we always, 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 always have this discussion about Trinidadians having short memories. Oh, uh, caller, are you there? Yeah. Yes, yes. I am Hello? sorry. Hello. But, uh, the other caller. Hello. Hello. My apologies. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sir. Okay, go ahead. Right. Sir. Okay, we're well, here. Yeah, yeah, Yes, I am. Trinidad and Tobago village, right here. And um, good morning, Brother David Mohammed. Good morning, um, Trinidad and Tobago. You hear me, Brother David? Yes, I am. Go ahead. All right. Okay. Yeah, um, you're so nice this morning, and uh, I really am interested in hearing what I say. I'm hearing. Um, you started to talk about the devils and things and so forth, and if we were living in that and how it would have looked like and uh, I see it reach all down to the point of America and how the devils in America rule the world. Now uh, I pick up with a conversation some time ago from you I got on a program where changing the politics of Trinidad and Tobago would have been a nice option like putting in um, a certain word I will use here the unitary house or a one chamber body, a micro parliament. If you could remember those words having a conversation with somebody. And I always keep it in my mind to recognize what those words really mean. Now, this morning, you really say that um, the kind of governments we have, the kind of people, hierarchy people that created this, this devil, um, this devil governance. But then I keep on asking our people to do for self. And that do for self is the same thing you come up and say earlier in this morning, which you may use one of the persons who I get that statement from, and it's a real statement that African people especially, and I want to put in poor people in Trinidad and Tobago because we are the suffering ones, who are not getting up to take over the political system and take it away from the opposition and what we may call the government that crucifying oppressing us in, in the economic form and almost every form that it is. Don't care how they might say that the PNM, the best PNM is good. PNM, there, they're there, the government. But the opposition is really no great, no option either. So I keep on asking we African people and poor people to get up and be the opposition of this country and take over and do for self, start to occupy our living conditions for ourselves as an opposition against governance. And I keep on asking for that. And I'm glad you bring it up this morning that I could bring it into the conversation. That is why I walk back to the situation of the one chamber parliament, which I would like you to open up that because I remember in the conversation Lloyd Best was a part of that conversation in the days of um of of um not chambers um of of, of Robert Smith. And and I, I had a clip but I I always want to bring it to you to for you to open it up because it's something that I heard there in bringing all the people into one parliament into, into the parliament of different representatives of, of all different subject matter. And I will try to close here by putting it out to you and, and see if you will bring it out in the future to enlighten me that we can have a different form of governance that, that um, passed and one past the post system. Yeah, 
So, I believe it then, hope that you really um, could make a move because Kenny like is the only person could do that in this country because nobody really had taken and no other form, everybody following that Dotish, England, Kenya, Westminster system that not working for me no more under this. And we still under colorless. I'm happy to be under understand that. Because right here we not independent. If people are independent, it's who rule the country. The profit masters on them. Thank you, brother David. I hope you really understand me. Thank you, thank you. People thank you, today. thank you. Me. Very much appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, call it good morning. Oh, yes, here I am again, brother David. I have yes. to pick up on the doctor. Uh, that is not a doctor. We keep calling this person a doctor. You can't be a doctor and a drug dealer at the same time. They just don't go together. That man is a drug dealer. And that is the only time that he was caught. But that is something he does all the time. Take drugs to the East-West Corridor. Do, do, do you know, can you confirm if it was um, Sanger Grandi? No, I can't. But I know it's in the East-West Corridor. Um, I can't, I can't okay. remember exactly where, where it took place. But that man is a drug dealer, full stop, you know. And um, as the caller said, we knows nothing about him. And he got a slap on the wrist. Ab- absolutely. Another thing again, too, is, is these dead bodies in the back of people, in the back of the yard. And that just come like another day. And, and, and it's swept under the rug and it's gone away. Dead bodies being removed from the person's home in the back of a yard. And we're not hearing anything. But this this man who is selling drugs to African people. And you, you see, we still want to sugarcoat the, 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 the health system and what is going on with African people in the health in the healthcare system. We still want to sugarcoat it. We still want to think that, you know, maybe it's not happening. It is happening. The women's uterus are being removed. And, and so many other things, they're not getting proper health care, especially, well, not especially, but all Africans. And when you are a certain age, you can't withstand the, 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 um, the rigors of not getting the proper health care. And that is what is going on in our health facilities now. So we have to be always vigilant, always vigilant. Thank you, my dear brother. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Uh, Caller, good morning. Let me see. Let me say good morning to you, Brother Mohammed. Uh, hello? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Hearing you. And let, me, let me say good morning to your listeners at this time on the Black Agenda project. It was a very long time. I did not call you on this program. I just came sometimes to the station to hear what the program or what I'm um, recording it now. Celine, and I want to say, uh, for the moment, I want to first be, and thank you for your WhatsApp invitation of attending your Eid and your Muslim brothers and sisters around the world. It was a, a, a day of um, two hours, which you was spend there. It was a day of nice, it was very nice, it was very welcoming. I message going to my friend who knows from the stock the president village and all who I meet and greet me and who know kings the king at that um function at the um called Utoe Center last evening on the for the moment we are lost in it. Our African community around Trinidad and Tobago, we are lost in it. And I want to target the African elderly, mid-African, and say, what are all you doing? What are all you doing to save our young brothers and sisters who are going to share what we are doing we know what is the problem we know all the problems we're afraid to go into our own community and talk to our children 
talk to our brothers, talk to our sisters and our daughters and our sons. We are afraid to go in. Well, Mohammed, why are we not encouraging our children to take the device and learn about the African culture instead of go up on IG and Twitter and be on Bacana and be on Confusion? Why are we encouraging? Why are we bringing it? If the, if, if the schools do not want to promote our African agenda, we have this, we have this thing that we have the, the, the phone, we, we have the tablets. So we don't need to say, okay, well, we don't need to uh, African school because YouTube has everything we could do with research on, on Google. How much of us encouraging our children, when we train home on weekends and Easter vacation and, and over vacation, we sit down and take the, the, the same device what we buy for our children and pull up Africa, pull up a name, see what's going on, everything is there. Everything there, everything there from 15, 14 is there to now on the internet. Everything black and white is, it, it is there. For the moment, we in so much of trouble. And I know that people in the past and others in the past who really consciously really understand that African today in this country, in the two the kind of arena. We are nowhere in. Oh my gosh. Well, let's say it again. Because they don't listen enough. They only listen to what they want to hear. And they will come to criticize them. They wouldn't take nothing. They wouldn't take nothing at all. Enough. They will come to criticize. Because they know why? They are conscious enough to understand. But we are living in this world and it's games. For the moment, I ask this question again. Where is the African in the two political arena side in this country? Where the where the where the And if they and, and if they're there, where they doing for me? In the two political sides, where they doing for me? For the moment, one thing I have on many Africans in this country. I was in three political parties and I interact with Africans in all the parties and then and I, and I can say that this, this it's class. It's not black man. Because at times but I'm a hundred I can we can be tell an African in the UNC with all calling his portfolio. I tell the African I say you is more Indian I never been here. African in the UNC went to an East Indian, a high profile East Indian, but moment, the African went to a high high profile East Indian in the UNC to complain about me and watching. I said, you get that way you do? No man Indian to complain about me. I said, he, he can beat me. I man. I African, I black. I think that will you do. Brother Mohammed, I will tell you who's that man. I will tell you who's that man personally. I will point out who's that person, that man. I want to say, all I will say, and who, 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 who for that, 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 that person, not in the UNC, no more. And that person is a young person. Because when I stand up to the elderly African man, I let him know. Hey, what going on? Oh yeah, the more East Indian than all your own people in the party. What going on? He telling me about green shot back in the days if we disrespect. I don't let them know. Because if 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 he if if he was instructed, if he was instructed to do what can see, if he said and shock you. Why are you going to pay a blind eye to that? Because I'm black like you. If they hear they shock you to see about that East Indian, and they go see about it because they, 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 they hear there's an Indian. So I, I feel offended for that. Because I call for days. I want to see me in meeting. 
Tell us in. Good job, Kimzi. Good job. I hear you. Good job. I want to call in your phone. You know I'm saying your phone. You need to see. You ain't playing him. But when I say, I say, I say, don't tell me nothing at all when you see me. Because all this more is Indian than not Indian in the past here. And I be real, my brother, mommy. I just be real. Like me or hit me wherever. I can only be Kimzi. So I got close. I'm not sure I'll do that. I'll do for my contribution. But the, the, the ending of the story is, Brother Muhammad, what we are doing to save our young black brothers, our children is lost in the fathers, our children is lost in the grandma, the grandpa. Our children is lost in the mothers. What we as a people we need to come up to, we need to come to Kings and Kings, this is the solution. Brother Mohammed, this is the solution. Now we come together, now we work together, now we put away our political difference. Because I can say, say I know we build up the lighter in the both two sides in, in my party where I support the Africans no way and talk. They are below. You know, how much Africans will come and say that in the party? I can say that here now on national radio. The, 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 the Africans in the UNC, there's no way to be seen. They have no power, they are weak. And if they have power, they, 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 they know they have to please the masses, so they are pleased the people and fools. You know, look at them. So this is a cry, this is a call for we as Africans. But the moment when I come here, I try, try to be Africanist because your program is about African and we support, we support it because then that program person is Indian, Chinese, Venezuelan. So we are, we have to have a program where person black and we talk the real issue yep. of black and what we on our African community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's been a while. Thank you. Thank you very much for your call. Very much appreciated. Caller, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, that sir. was a loud cry for help. Now, um, I would like to make a point of a racist statement that's very popular. Right? It says 1%. Right? It's very popular. And after blaming the one percent eh, for everything. Trinidad and Begonians, the people with the best financial situation in the Caribbean, leave here and go to Syria, which is the one percent country, right? Part of the Madara, the continent. Right? They go there to kill people. And inevitably, either the court will kill them or in the war they will die. And they go with their family, children and wives. Right? All of them get put in a camp. And then now, this country whoever concerned would like demanding that the country bring them back. They don't study that the plane they have to come on, the airline, very scared of bringing these people back. They don't study nothing. They blame the, the government here. So not long, these people went willingly. Yes. All right, I um, uh, the position that you're taking on this matter, yeah. in my humble judgment, is very naive and even mm-hmm. pathetic, to be honest. I feel sorry for you that you see the situation yeah. this way. As I can be going on. Would say some of the things that you've said, but uh, that's your opinion. What about the 1% remark? Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for your call. 
442 and 4665391 on this Saturday morning. Let me go back to the phone lines. Caller, good morning. Good morning, uh, Brother Mohammed. I just want to address three things I heard there. Quick, quick, quick. Firstly, look at the brainwash that we have. The only person who we know got beaten on Easter is Jesus Christ. So we, the, the, the people have brainwashed us into believing that you're beating somebody bad when it is the only person that, we, that was beaten was Christ. And we continue to beat the effigy of Jesus. And we believe we're doing something good. Anyhow, okay, so let's move on. I heard the brothers talk about, you know, the um, people that, that, that they get in on fair treatment in the judiciary. But I want people to understand that is our fault as black people because we decided, okay, we'll just let our government take care of us. And what happens to, to us as a people? We don't want to get involved in anything, so we end up with nothing. And people who don't like us are in charge of our lives, our, our health. Our, our decisions as to whether it is we go end up in jail. And we hear about the people and them, the children who are dying. And, and the highest child mortality that we had was between 2010 and 2015. I don't make the rules. I don't make the statistics. Go and look it up. But when I call and I cry for genocide, people say, no, man, you're, 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 you're overreacting. God, so what? Who are the doctors? Who are the doctors that are seeing about us? Who are the judges that sent that this, uh, when it is a, 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 a guy got, got two years in prison for even one piece of cheese to feed his family? Hmm. And two people who broke into a, 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 a business place to steal bling. But because they look like the judge, they got a suspended sentence. And because it is the man didn't look like the judge, he got two years in jail. Who are the judges? Because we not fighting to prove... To, to make ourselves seen, we're not going forward. One little black boy turned into a, a, a lawyer and we have people disrespecting him. Why we allow ourselves that we are the only community in this country that people feel comfortable, comfortable to disrespect us, to then regale us. Why we as black people are comfortable with that? And we don't say nothing. And you know what? We help ourselves because what it is we saw a black Rasta man doing in front of the Prime Minister house calling him a Kobo. If we can't respect ourselves, we want people to respect us. Where are we going? What are we doing? It sickles me to think that we expect people that don't like us to be in charge of us and when it has one person i don't care how much bad they do because it are nobody perfect and as far as politicians go i want you all to understand politicians are a reflection of the society from which they came from so if they're bad we bad too really well my beloved brother i want to thank you for sharing that position But this is where I begin to conclude. Caller, you just have literally a couple seconds to give us your closing remarks. Go ahead, Caller. Uh, morning. Yes, go ahead. Just a few seconds. Yeah, but listen, All right. All right, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah morning. Caller, you just have a few short seconds. Go ahead, please. Yeah, um, the brother who talk about the, the courthouse. And, um, and I want to draw reference to what you were talking about with this Easter Bunny. That's a serious thing. Remember the time I called you and tell you about, tell me something that you don't know? And I was saying to you, you put a thing, you made me try, but we don't make the mind. I think I remember that phrase. All right, so this is where I have to close up shop for this morning. Remember, tomorrow, tomorrow we have that great lecture at the Kwame Ture Center. Tomorrow morning, April 14th, Sunday morning, 11 a.m. We're looking at signs of the end of times and the new world order. It is going to be a 
lecture that is going to touch so many fascinating areas. So look forward to seeing you. And then remember, Saturday, May 25th, African Unity Conference 2024. Stay tuned to the Street 919 FM. Assalamu The views expressed are not necessarily the views of the management of the Street 919 FM. FM. If you want greater respect from your bankers, bosses, those in authority, then words matter. If you want more productive business relationships with co-workers, customers, or clients, then join Dr. Madonna on the street, 919 FM, every Monday, 11 a.m. to 12 noon. For words matter. Communication for joyful workplaces. Dr. Madonna will help you unlock the secret power of words for your financial relationships relationship and physical well-being whether you work at home on the road or in an organization join dr madonna every monday 11 a.m to 12 noon for words matter communication for joyful workplaces Jazz and Wine, or is it Beyond Jazz and Wine? Sunday, May 5th, 4 p.m. Set the stage, the queen amongst the kings, powerhouse vocalist, Mauricia Kagan, saxophone specialist, Malcolm Boyce, versatile and captivating, Sigu Rankin, panist extraordinaire, Dane Galston, with his band, Live Sweet Bread, and the chosen one, John Melody, will get you off your seats. This event is definitely beyond Jazz and Wine. Experience this musical journey at the enchanting outdoor garden theater at Queens Hall. Transform into an oasis fit for kings and queens. Sunday, May 5th, 4 p.m. Limited early bird tickets available at Java Nation, Queens Park East, and online at islandetickets.com or call 737-2373. Jazz and Wine. Experience the sweetness over and over again. You've been waiting for this redemption. The way forward. The elevation of consciousness. Solid as a rock. June 1st, 2024. Concert Capital. Queen Sparks of Van and Trinidad. Redemption. We present Sisla Kalonji. Dry cry. Sisla. 